And we're here this morning. I know last week I said we're going to finish the, the message. Didn't I tell you that? And, and in Romans it says, let every man be a liar and God be true. And I'm going to confirm that it's, it's true. Because I'm not going to finish it this week. Because while I was gone, God ministered to me, you know. Because I can preach a good sermon, but I don't want just a good sermon. I want a God sermon. I, I want to follow what the Holy Ghost is saying. And, and while we were gone, being ministered to, uh, I got the download. And so we'll go with the download first, and then we'll go with the other download after. Okay? Is that going to be okay? If it's not okay, it's still going to happen. <laughs> Praise God. I, what can I say? Amen. But I need God. Amen? I need Jesus. I need His Holy Spirit. And so, Father, today I am asking for your presence uh, your anointing, because only your anointing can open up blind eyes. Only your anointing can heal broken hearts. Only your anointing can transform our lives. Only your anointing can help us see what you want us to see. Only your anointing can help us hear what you want us to hear. And I'm asking for your anointing this morning, because I know I can do nothing of myself. I know that if the Holy Spirit doesn't anoint the words... It has no life in it because your words are spirit words. They are life words. I need your words. I need your thoughts, your mind. I need your way of doing it, not my way. I need you to speak through me so that we all can benefit, including myself. And so I thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. And everybody said, do you believe that this morning? I covet your prayers, people. I I need your prayers, right? Right? I I sure do. Amen. You know, years ago, about 10 years ago, give or take a couple of years, uh, uh, we sat, my wife and I sat in front of a woman, and she asked us a question, why? Why? Why do you, why do you have a church? Why, why do you even have the church open? Because there are how many churches, even in, this, even in a, a half a mile radius, how many churches are there? And, and, and she said, well, why not just close your church and, and join the other one? Now, she wasn't saying that in a bad way. She was trying to find out why in the world does the house exist? And if it's just existing just to be another church, it has lost its significance. We have to have a purpose. We, we have to be different. And, and so the discussion caused us to look deep in our hearts to, to find out Wait a minute, do we really even need to have the doors open? Is there something about the house that is different from other churches? Uh, you know, we have different parts of the body. We're not saying that the other church is insignificant. What we are saying is that there must be significance because if I'm part of, of the pinky finger, but I'm trying to be a thumb, guess what? I'm in the wrong place. I need to be part of a pinky finger. Uh, think, think about it. Okay, so, so we really had to look deep into our hearts. And, and in that process, we realized, yes, there is something about the house that is different. And not that we're better than the next church, but, but we're here for a purpose. And, and one thing we, we, we realized that or as she, she talks, she says, you are different. The fact that you got saved later in life and God called you and, and fixed your marriage. And after what would have been a divorce... God put you back together miraculously that you have something to say about family and about relationships and, and about being loved, accepted, and connected. Don't you know that, that that's different? And, and we realize that we are different, different in our expression, different in our context, different in our makeup, different in our purpose. And we all have a purpose. Everybody's seeking why. Why? Everybody wants to know, why was I born? What significance do I have? What is my purpose? Everybody wants to know they have a purpose. Everybody wants to know that they are part of something that's important. Something that's significant. Something that's going to change and and affect a change in people's lives. And I'm here to say that you are born with a purpose. You're not a mistake. You're not an error. You're not an afterthought. Even if you were birthed in adverse circumstances, uh, maybe you, you don't even know who your parents were. And, well, why am I here? Well, the parents may have not wanted you, but God wanted you. 
God said you had significance. God said, I have you here for a purpose and for a reason. And we have to discover what that reason is. Find that purpose. Join in that effort. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that's what we want to talk about today. Why? Now, last year, God says, I've given you permission to be more than who you are. There's much more to you than, than, than what you think. There's a gift. There's a treasure inside of you. God's glory. God's presence. God's Holy Spirit. God, Jesus himself, who lives in your heart. He, he has placed you in, he is inside of you and given you permission to be more than who you are. Why? Because his glory is going to accentuate his capacity through an earthen vessel. And, and so that we may know that it was him doing it. Because when we do something, we go, whoa. That whoa means, whoa, it wasn't me. That was God doing it. And so we, we have to make sure we always point to Jesus that this is God doing something. Now, I'm not doing something. God is doing something. Because I can do nothing of myself, John 15. It, unless a, a branch is hooked up to a vine, it can produce no fruit. Now, we just cut off. I just cut off before I left on, on our, on our uh, uh, conference. Uh, we have a vine that's growing some, some passion fruit. And so I trimmed it back. And I came back a week later, the leaves are wilted. It's not producing fruit. It will. I trimmed it. It's going to grow back. But, but, and we need to be trimmed, don't we? We need to be trimmed so that we can grow. Uh, but all the fruit that was on there dropped. Now, because we lost those type of fruits doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. No, we're going to grow bigger and better fruit. All right? Every tree needs to be trimmed, doesn't it? And so God trims us. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. No one likes to be trimmed. Do I have some amens on that? But we need to be trimmed, don't we? Amen. So I want to read what, what we read uh, last year, a portion of it. Uh, Passion Translation 317 through 20. Let's read this together as we did last year. Uh, I said we'd never read it again, but here we are reading it again. Look at that. Uh, let's read. Just, just know this. I, I may... I may say something and be mistaken, but I'm not lying. I will not lie to you. Okay, I can be mistaken, and, and it may look like a lie, but, but no, it's just, no, I, I said something and, and, and I was wrong. Okay? That's a big difference, okay? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully there's a difference there. Let's read this. Then, by constantly using my faith, look, what does it say? Whose faith? Mine. Now, who's the author and the finisher of your faith? So it's still his faith working in you, right? The life of Christ will be released deep inside me. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of my life. Go back, go back, go back. Look at that. The resting place of what? Now, that's important. His love. That's very important. Whose love? It needs to become what? And the root. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Then, let's read it together. Then I will be empowered to discover what every one, Holy One experienced, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimension. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is your love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into me until I am filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. I will never doubt. Stop that. What, what are you not going to do? And you're not going to doubt what? And who, where is it going to work? See, that's, that's a treasure, isn't it? You have a power inside of you to make you more than who you are. God's given you permission to be more than who you are. Because it's his power that accomplishes all this. Continue. He will achieve infinitely more than my greatest request, my most unbelievable dream, and exceed my wildest imagination. He will outdo them all. 
for his miraculous power constantly energizes me. Amen. Then we're reading a little bit on Proverbs 1.1. 1, 1, and this is the Ken W. Delgado amplified, paraphrased, updated, uh, and commentary version of Proverbs 1.1 1, 1, and 2. Soon to be released for $5. We only got two, two uh, verses translated, and so that's all we, you know, I can sell it for is just $5. Uh, we'll take up the offering now. But let's read it together. Here are kingdom revelations, words that I live by, and words of wisdom given to empower me to reign in life, written as Proverbs by Israel's King Solomon, David's son. Your Holy Spirit will impart and reveal to me the wisdom and spiritual understanding of your words to unlock the true knowledge of the treasures of my life that you have prepared for me. Isn't that beautiful? I like that version. Amen. And, uh, and we, we covered that in the first couple of weeks, so I'm not going to cover that again. I want you, we're going to read Ephesians 1. 23 and 24 in the message translation. Ephesians 1, 23 and 24. And we can read this too together. That'll be all right. We can do this. And there it is. Let's read. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he feels... It, with his presence. Amen. That was it, right? Praise God. What is, what, is the church still relevant? It is. The church is still the answer. Now, some people say, well, the church the way it is today is not going to work. Baloney. Baloney. God had churches in the time of Jesus, uh, or after Jesus raised from the dead. There was churches back then, and they worked. And they're still relevant. It is the church that has the answer for the world. It is the church that has the light and life of God. It is the church working together that creates an avenue for life to be imparted to the rest of the world. That's why this Luis Palau event is so important. Why? Because when you get 200 churches working and striving together for one purpose, there the anointing and the blessing resides. God is about to unleash his glory in Brevard County. And he's going to change the direction of Brevard County because the church is working together. That's why we have to be here. But it's not just for that. He is training us for what's coming after. It's not a one-time event. It's a continual event. Christmas extravaganza was just one of many events where God is saying, I am preparing for a great harvest. And you're part of it. Say, I'm part of it. Say it like you mean it. Tell the person like you, like you mean it. Amen. You are part of it. Amen. So uh, I'm going to now jump because, because the church is important. And, and I'm going to say this statement. I see God's church that is filled with his love, his faith, and his power. Creating a place where families can become strong and healthy. Because God is the father of it all. Now, your family can be strengthened because of God. But also, if you're here and you say, but I don't have family. No, you have a family. This is a family. This is God's family. And he is the father of them all. And this is a greater measure of the first institution that God made, God's family. A husband, a wife, and children. Family. But this is a greater family. So we are one together, aren't we? And so uh, I have many brothers and many sisters. And, and we're all of different colors. And different backgrounds. But you're still family. Aren't you glad you have a family? Is family necessary? Is family necessary? Yes. He, it's important. We need family. Because when one person falls, it's better to have a family member that can pick you back up. Yes. 
and walk with you, right? And we, we can't do it alone. We can't say, I don't need of you. We, we need each other. We need each other because we're part of a larger family. And God wants to do something. And then, and then I say this. Because of that, because God is the father of all of this family and the greater family, the church family, and because we're strong, strong in God, strong in his word. Because of that, I see God shining the light of Jesus so that the church will be able to affect their city in all social economic arenas, including the political and educational system. Because the church is strong, the family will be strong. Because the family is strong, the city will be blessed. Our county will be blessed. Our state will be blessed. And these United States of America, I call it blessed. Now, let's, let's look at this carefully. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So we know that love needs to be the very foundation, the root. It has to be the resting place where things spring for, from. So the very, the very bottom part, uh, we, we have to have love as the reason for our being and expression. Because if you don't love, guess what? Yes. I know not God. For God is. I just read the scripture, didn't you? Look at the person next to you and say, Do you need a cup of coffee? Yes, please. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is what? So, so if we love, we know God. If we don't forgive, guess what? I don't know God because God forgives and God is love. You're all so enthusiastic this morning. <laughs> love forgives, right? So we, listen, if, if we, we, we need love because without love, we're like a bunch of noise. Sounding cymbals, clanging, making a bunch of things, but, but the root was not love, right? Then we find also in Galatians 5, 6, it says, uh, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails nor un." Uh, anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith that works by what? Okay, listen, let me go back here for a minute. You guys got this. You, 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 you are awesome. You know how to love. When people walk through that door, we've had some people go, whoa, this is different. Why? Because you're an expression of love. You, you, you are, some, someone, I, I forget who, but someone said, the first hug I got, I said, this is weird, but I like it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And they, they may come like a four by four, but when we finish, they're like you said hello, how you do hug every You week. took your time. Praise God. When I you, met you, you make that happen. You know God. God is love. You know how to love your neighbor. It was clear I could You know, see. you're doing that. But, you but it says, from love, faith works. Right? Faith worketh by. So, uh, out of the love, we have to exercise faith. This is the root. This is where we get our strength. And from that position of love, we exercise faith. Because faith works by love. Okay. Is this too deep for a Sunday morning? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, James 2, 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is what? Also. So, so from this faith springs forth works. Doesn't it? In other words, there's got to be faith. Love causes faith to be energized. And from that energetic, energized faith, 
We have a work to do. Jesus says, I came to do my father's work. Or to finish my father's work. And, and what do we do? We finish Jesus' works. Jesus has an assignment for us. And we've got to work our what? Faith. What do we have to work? Faith. What do we have to work? Faith. Now our faith has works. Now works isn't what gets us saved. But because we love and we're saved... We have the faith of God that causes us to do His work. He says, I have ordained you to bear much fruit. So we're supposed to produce some work, some fruit, because it's the works that we do that causes people to begin to glorify God. Say, wow, look at those Christians. They're making such a big difference. Christmas extravaganza. Who did that? The church, the church. Free, 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 free. <laughs> yes, because... You, 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 don't, you don't buy salvation. Come on. You get it as a gift. Look at the person next to you and say, you can be saved. It's a gift. Tell them it's a gift. Right? It's a gift. Right? But, but faith, faith comes from what? Faith. Now, the pr let, me, let me just read something else. Okay? Let's, let's read Luke 18.8. King James Version. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on this earth? That's a good question. When he comes, shall he find faith? Well, how do I know if you have faith? Show me your faith without your works, I'll show me your faith by my works. So, so your works are an expression of your faith. Now the problem is, some of us have retired our faith. I don't know if it's the Mickey Mouse syndrome. It's the only place where a mouse has people captive in a check cage. But, but we get this mentality, this vacation mentality. You know, I'm in Disney World. I don't have to do anything. You know, I don't know if it's that. But the reality is, is that too many of us as Christians, we have retired our faith. We, we retired from our work, and we retired from our faith. Sometimes we're still working in our job places, but we still retired from our faith. So I have to ask you a question. Have you retired your faith? See, to find our purpose, we have to have a, a reason for, for doing something, right? And, and if we're not doing anything, we'll never find our purpose. And so the reality is, is that if, if we're not working our faith, our faith is dead. And now our love has no avenue to express the realities of Jesus Christ. You see, there's a world, isn't there? We, we are not... Here's the world. The world is peripheral to the church. This is the church. Okay? We, we are the ones who connect God, love, accepted, connected. We are the ones that connect God to the world. We bring the light and life to the world. We bring out the God colors to the world. We are the ones that reach those who are hurt, those who are crying, dying, those who are in need, those who are abused, mistreated. And, and, and we bring, through love and faith, his ability, capacity to work in their lives and transform them. If we don't have this working, what happens to this? It goes darker. So, so that's why we have to affect every socio-economic area, as well as the educational area. as well as the political arena. Because if we don't bring light into these areas, what happens to the area? It goes down. We're, we're the, it, the, the law of, I forget, entropy? Entrop entropy? Everything is on a decline unless it gets sustained. If, if, you, if you, listen, you know why more people die after they retire? 
No purpose. If there's nothing sustaining them for reason for living, then they're dying. You see, why am I so energetic? Because I got purpose. <laughs> it keeps me young. You wouldn't know that I'm 89, did, would you? <laughs> Honey, you're not supposed to tell them how old you are. I, I lost track. But, but we, that's why God says in Deuteronomy uh, and Leviticus, I think, He says, select those in office, people who fear God. People who are wise and capable. And people who are not in it for the money. So when you hear someone in, in a political arena saying, I want to raise. That should say it all. I want it for the money. And you know, if someone's in there for the money, whose money do they want? So, so we have to be a voting people. Now, I didn't say you have to be, you don't have to, you don't, you don't vote elephant and you don't vote donkey. You vote the lamb. Can I have a, come on, I need a praise. They say you shouldn't ask for a praise, but, but I need a praise for that one. We vote the Lamb of God. It doesn't matter which one you're listed under. Vote the Lamb of God. Vote the value of Jesus in whatever area you're in. Vote them. Vote the Lamb. Amen. We bring the elephant and the donkey together. We're reconcilers. We call them... We call them... Uh, 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 Donkey fant. <laughs> elephant and don donkey elephant joint. That's in the new Ken Delgado unabridged dictionary version. Uh, we bring them together. All right? Just say amen. amen. Or just, just say, okay, go keep moving, Pastor. You're out of your you're out of your anointing. The lamb, the lamb. But we do preach we do vote the lamb. Say I vote the lamb. Do you vote Jesus? Yeah, we vote Jesus, right? Okay, so we've got to be involved because if we don't, we, lo we lost the battle. We have to connect, don't we? Remember that the first institution that God made was the family institution. That's why family is so important. But don't you know that when we come in from the world as we get saved, don't we know we have a lot of world still in us? Uh, but we need some people that help us change what we came with and become what God wants us to be. We need the help. That's why we need each other. Right? That's why we need each other. Why? Because I, I had some things that I had to, to, to get out of my system. I needed a venue. I needed a church where the word was spoken to cleanse me and to build me and to change the way I'm thinking. Get the world thinking out. Get God thinking in. Now, I know I'm perfect now. Just ask my wife. <laughs> Obviously not, right? Come on. Would you lighten up a little bit? Obviously. I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously not. But, but I need, you know, we need each other because iron sharpens what? Iron. So we need each other. We need someone to speak truth into our life. We need someone to say, say something like this. Have you retired your faith because you're sitting down and doing nothing for the kingdom? then you are becoming irrelevant to God's purposes. It's time, if you want God to move in your life, then you've got to move with God, and it's time this year for us to move, because God got a work to do here in Palm Bay and the cities round about. It's time to get in, in the saddle of the horse of faith and say, let's go ride, because I've got some vision that God wants me to accomplish for my life. We've got to do that. We have to, all right? Why? Well, how does that happen? Well, we have connect groups. Everybody say connect groups. connect groups. 
Yeah, we have different connect groups. That's why you're coming tonight. To heart and soul. Because my sheep hear my voice. I like that. Who did that? Could I have some more sheep, please? <laughs> that was, that, I like that. <laughs> Praise God. But, you know, these connect groups not only connect us to each other, it also is a venue to connect and reach out to the world. Amen. See, right now, uh, Devon needed connection. But she's not going to get that type of connection in the world. She needs some faith-believing, God-fearing, anointed people that say, No, this is not going to happen. Jesus is Lord. We need some faith people. Amen? Even people who aren't saved, when they need something, they go to believers. Would you pray for me, please? Do you know Jesus? No, but would you pray for me, please? Why? Because they know where the power is at. Amen. They know who's a believer. Praise the Lord. Are y'all with me here? Okay. So, so we can't retire our faith, can we? So what, what we're doing in, in this week and next week is realizing we're going to resurrect some vision because we've had some vision here. Most of you don't know the vision, but we're going to share the vision. But I, I want you to share, I want you to know the realities of here. Where's Ernie and Sylvia? Ernie and Sylvia? There you are. When Ernie... I know that you've talked about this before, so, so I, I feel free to talk about it. When, when I first met them, uh, and, and we visited their home, uh, their home was, what was it? A wreck. <laughs> I'm glad they said it. It was a wreck. You went in, the, even, even the house was a wreck. I mean, not just husband and wife, but the house, there was no furniture. Uh, they, uh, half of it was cement, and... and, and my wife had came in and said, Woo! And one day they sat in my office and, and, and Sylvia was there, right, Tiffany? Sylvia was there and, 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 and she was there telling how Ernie needed to change. And let me tell you, Ernie needed to change. <laughs> uh, he still needs to change. <laughs> but but uh, then I looked at her and said, And you need to change. And she, well, well, Me? And guess what? She decided to listen, and she changed. Amen. See, we need each other, but we need to listen. Amen. She decided to change. Their family now is whole. I'm not saying it's where it's going to be, but as compared to before, it's, it's, it's healthier. Their, their house is beautiful. <laughs> They're prospering. Uh, certainly, we all have tribulations we have to overcome. But as compared to where they came from, it's like, oh my goodness. The, the reality that, that, that uh, uh, Victor and, and, and Jennifer, uh, to be seeking a $7 million selling capacity in real estate, yeah. in her mind, it was beyond her imagination of what she could think, hope, or ask for. We had someone give the largest uh, not the largest, but we got a substantial tithe that was not designated. Praise God for the non-designated, because we, we can do some things. But, but what I'm trying to say is that we need each other. Why? Because our capacity is increased when we work together. Our capacity is increased when we can challenge each other. Our capacity and connection increases when we can pray for each other. When we actually open up and say, listen, this is my life. It's, it is what it is. There's, there's a place of faith where we call those things that be not as though they are. True. But there's also a place where we say, but this is where I'm at right now. I need prayer. I need someone to speak into my life. I need someone to correct me. Are you with me? And so we need to understand the realities of what, what needs to happen this year because God, God, we're going to increase this year. We're going to have a greater impact this year. But it's going to be an impact because you're going to prosper. You're going to be better. You're going to change. You're going to have God working through you like you've never seen it before. 
But if you're not connected, if we're not connecting to the world, if we're not connected with our faith, with that spring out of love, love causes us to want to touch someone else's life. If, if we don't care about our neighbor, we have retired our faith. Are you retired? Or do you need to be refired? Yeah, it's time now. If, if anything, if you want God to move beyond your capacity of imagination, then you've got to unretire your faith. It's no more, I'm going to get it and not do anything. No, that's faith without works. It's, I've got something for you to do, hook up to what I'm doing. Jesus prospered because he did everything that Jesus said to do. He walked where God said walk. He spoke where God said speak. He did when God said do. And because he was doing what God said, he prospered. So, it, my challenge to you this year is, get out of retirement. Thank you for your enthusiastic amen. Let me, let me try. I, I know there's, there's a place. There's a place where they're going, oh, I feel like God's going to do something in my life this week. Because I know God is going to move supernaturally. Because I'm going to unretire my faith. I, I think it's time. That we start looking at our lives and say, you know what? I am coming out of retirement. I'm going to get refired. Amen. Listen, I don't care what happened at the last church. What I care is what happened to you. <laughs> and it's time now to say, forget my past. My past doesn't determine my future. Today is the day that I'm going to go for all that God has for me because I am here with a purpose. Now we're going to talk more about all of that. But I'm out of time again. Someone came up to me and says, you know, maybe we need a service where there's no time limit. <laughs> That's a pastor's dream. <laughs> Praise God. Probably what, what, what would, would, I'm not going to, it's a dream. Did you hear that over here? Did you, did you, who did not hear that over here? She said, uh, we, were, we were down. We, we were in a hard place. And if it weren't for your love, if it weren't for your faith, we would have never pulled through. And if we as Christians needed that to help pull through, how much more to those people that are in the world without hope need the church to step up and be what they need to be so they can have hope and they can have a place where they can reach out and find life. Now, I paraphrased a little bit on that, but, but, but the substance is still the same. Are you with me? Can you stand for a minute? So good to see you all. You too. <laughs> Your family. It's great to see you. We call you blessed. Amen. Yeah. And I just can't wait to see what, what pops out. <laughs> it's going to be so beautiful. Amen. And, and I apologize. I looked at you and said, boy, she looks familiar. But did she come to our church like a couple of years ago? And, oh, no, no, she's her mom. Right? <laughs> That's right. 
Why don't we look at our lives for a minute and say, wait a minute, what am I doing? For Jesus who died for me. He endured the cross. I, I know that, listen, we've all had bad experiences in churches. I, I've had bad experiences in churches before I was pastor. <laughs> Maybe while I was pastor, I don't know. But that doesn't take or detract from the reality of what God wants to do through his church. And somewhere we just got we just got to we just got to take control of our own salvation. And, and I'm doing this for Jesus. Because that's why, I, that's why I'm doing it. Trust me, that's why I'm doing it. If, if, I, if I were doing it for money, I would have left a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. The, the first 25 years... Uh, was was without insurance. I, I couldn't afford it. The church couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford it. Amen. You try raising a, a family of five, six, or maybe you understand because you are raising at $300 a week and that includes the mortgage. We had to believe God for food. There were times I was working at night at Winn-Dixie. Nobody knew. God bless Winn-Dixie. And they were happy I was working there because I'm a good worker. <laughs> and and uh, why? Because I had used my faith and I said, well, I, and faith was working. But I said, no, but I, I need to go ahead and supply for my family. And, and I'm, I'm working from 12 midnight to 6 in the morning until someone came and said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm working. <laughs> they caught me. And then they said, well, we're going we're gonna to do something about that because we don't need you working at night. We, we've all had difficult times. But God says, don't retire your faith. Don't retire your faith even if you don't see it's, wor it's working because though you don't see it's working, guess what? God is, even if you don't feel like it's working, guess what? God is what? He's working. He is working. Even if you don't see your family member coming to Jesus, guess what? God is still working. Yeah, even, even if you don't see your spouse chasing, I mean changing, chasing. Hopefully he's not chasing. But, but even if he's not changing, guess what? God is still what? Working. He's still working. He's still working. He's still work. He is working. He is working. He is working. Isn't he, Oliver? He's working. He's working. But let's re let's unretire our faith. Now next week we'll talk about vision. We'll talk more about vision. But come tonight, heart and soul. It's about vision too. But come tonight, so important. Everything's building up because God wants to do something so special in your life. And, and we want to help you get there. We want, we want God to do something special. We want God to do something. I, I can't do it alone. But together, all things become possible. You're so important. Can I reemphasize that? You are so valuable. You are so needed. You are so, so necessary to the body of Christ. You're so important. But let God work through you. If you're here and you're saying, I need to rededicate my life, this is a great time to do it. If you're on the internet, you just happen to pass by and you're looking for significance. Jesus thought you were so significant, he died for you. And he wants to rescue you. He wants to change your life. He wants to come in and put things right side up. You don't have to wait until you're right to get right. No, you get Jesus. He will make you right and he will change your life. He will change your life. For some of us, you need to re rededicate your life today because you just looked at yourself. You answered the question, why? And the question was, why did I retire my faith? 
and you just realize you need, I need to get out of retirement. Can I have a better amen? I, I've been sitting too long looking at too many faces. But I'm going to get in the game. Maybe this is the time. Maybe you, what's held you back is the previous experiences. Well, forgive. Do you love? Then forgive. Well, how often do I have to forgive? Seven times seven. And I'll press the issue for you. <laughs> as long as they come and they say, please forgive me. But listen, even if they don't, if you, if you search scripture, it says, even if they don't, you still go and you, and you, and you, you forgive them. Because that's who you are. You're the body of Christ. But you get out of retirement. So it's a great time to rededicate. If you've never given your life to Jesus, this is a great day to do it. Why? Jesus loves you. He wants to do something in your life. If you'll just yield to him, let him take control. Let him into your life. He will, he will turn you right side up. He will clean out those dirty closets. He will, he will just cause you to blossom. He'll be so beautiful, so handsome. Amen. Praise God. So if you're here today, and, and maybe, maybe uh, all of you are saved. I don't know your life. But if that's you and you're saying, you know what, you spoke to me, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm in the game and I want to rededicate my life. Just raise your hand real quick. Right where you're at, just say, that's me, Pastor. Anybody here this morning? Say, that's me. Just raise it up real quick. Anybody? Thank you, sir. You, praise God. God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. I won't ask who here has their faith retired. We want to keep you incognito. But you can rededicate your faith right now. Amen. All together just say, Father, I thank you that Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. But I got to let him in. And let him work my faith through my works. Because I love people. Because I love Jesus. Because I believe in my heart. Jesus was raised from the dead. And because I made him Lord. I have decided. To let him be my Lord. And he said. And he asked. Will I find faith. On this earth. I will find. I will have faith. I will have working faith. Because Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I will get out of retirement. And start doing something. Because he's my Lord. And he's my Savior. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Here I am Lord. Use me. Amen. Give him a big shout of praise.